Hello everyone, I am Muksha and I am going to talk about left iliac fossa. The abdomen is divided into 9 regions by 2 vertical and 2 horizontal imaginary planes. We are going to see the left iliac region which is just below the left lumbar region and besides hypogastric region. The organs present here are descending colon, sigmoid colon, a part of small intestine, left fallopian tube in female and left ovary. The diseases here are diverticulitis, ulcerative colitis, volvulus, inguinal hernia, salpingitis, ectopic pregnancy, and ovarian cysts. Diverticulitis. Now, diverticulitis disease develops when pouches form along a digestive tract, typically in our colon. These pouches are known as diverticula. They form when weak spots in our intestinal wall balloon outwards. The clinical features are abdominal pain, fever, tenderness, constipation or less commonly diarrhea and nausea and vomiting. Investigations that can be done are blood tests, tool sample, sigmoidoscopy and barium enema. The complications of diverticulitis are an abscess, blockage in a bowel, fistula and peritonitis. And it usually affects male or people who are above 40 years of age, obese people or people with low fiber diet or high intake of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and smoking. Ulcerative colitis, a chronic inflammatory bowel disease that causes inflammation in the digestive tract. Ulcerative colitis is usually only in the innermost lining of the large intestine and rectum. It forms ranges from mild to severe. This is what normal urine of the colon looks like. And this is ulcerative colitis. Now, Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis are both IVD, but the major difference is Crohn disease affects the entire GI system, but the U ulcerative colitis affects only the colon. The characteristic symptom is bloody diarrhea and pus in your stools, and the other clinical features are cramps, fever, urge for stool, unable to hold it in, weight loss, dehydration, joint pain, eye pain when you look at the bright light, anemia, and not feeling hungry. Investigations that can be done are blood tests, tool sample to rule out infection or parasites, sigmoidoscopy, and colonoscopy. The complications of ulcerative colitis are severe bleeding, perforated colon, severe dehydration, osteoporosis, inflammation of your skin, joints, and eyes, an increased risk of colon cancer, a rapidly swelling colon, and increased risk of blood clots in veins and arteries. There are various types of ulcerative colitis like proctitis, proctosigmoiditis, distal colitis, extensive colitis, and pancolitis. It usually depends on the location where it's affected. Volvulus. It's an obstruction due to twisting or knotting of the GI tract. Twisting or knotting can block the intestine and obstruct blood flow. This is most commonly due to birth defect or malrotation which occurs during fetal development. It can also occur in older adults with constipation. Now we are going to talk about sigmoid volvulus. The clinical features here are abdominal pain and tenderness, vomiting, green bile, nausea, distended abdomen, bloody stool, constipation and shock. For infants, sudden bouts of crying, drawing in the legs as if in pain, lethargy, rapid heart rate and breathing. On examination, the abdomen is often very tympanic to percussion. The investigations that can be done are blood tests, tests to examine stool for blood, barium x-rays, computer tomography and flexible sigmoidography where a horseshoe sign is seen just like shown in this picture. The complications of sigmoid volvulus are sepsis, short bowel syndrome and secondary peritonitis. Inguinal hernia. It occurs in the abdomen near the groin area. They develop when fatty or intestinal tissues push through a weakness in the abdominal wall near the right or left inguinal canal. Each inguinal canal resides at the base of the abdomen. The clinical features are pain when cuffing, exercising or bending over, burning sensation, sharp pain, a heavy or full sensation in the groin, swelling of the scrotum in men. These are various types of hernia. Now there are two types of inguinal hernia, indirect and direct. The indirect is caused by birth defect and abdominal wall that is congenital. Direct usually occurs in adult males. These are most often caused by weakness in the muscles of the abdominal wall that develops over time or are due to straining or heavy lifting. The risk factors are male, increasing age, raised intra-abdominal pressure from chronic cuff, heavy lifting or chronic constipation and obesity. 
Salpingitis. It is a type of PID. It develops when harmful bacteria enter the reproductive tract. Salpingitis is another form of PID usually results from STIs that involves bacteria such as chlamydia or gonorrhea. Salpingitis causes inflammation of the fallopian tubes. Inflammation can spread easily from one tube to the other. So both tubes may be affected. If left untreated, salpingitis can result in long-term complications. The clinical features are foul-smelling vaginal discharge, yellow vaginal discharge, pain during ovulation, menstruation and sexual intercourse, spotting between periods dull lower back pain, abdominal pain, nausea, vomiting, fever, and frequent urination. The investigations that can be done are blood and urine tests for markers of infection, swab test of your vagina and cervix, transvaginal or abdominal ultrasound, and HSG. Ectopic pregnancy. In the case of an ectopic pregnancy, the fertilized egg doesn't attach to the uterus. Instead, it may attach to the fallopian tube, abdominal cavity, or cervix. While a pregnancy test may reveal a woman is pregnant, a fertilized egg can't properly grow anywhere other than the uterus. The clinical features are nausea and breast soreness, sharp waves of pain in the abdomen, pelvis, shoulder or neck, severe pain that occurs on the one side of the abdomen, light to heavy vaginal spotting or bleeding, dizziness or fainting and rectal pressure. The investigations that can be done are transvaginal ultrasound and levels of HCG and progesterone. These are hormones that are present during the pregnancy. If these hormone levels start to decrease or stay the same over the course of few days and a gestational sac isn't present in an ultrasound, the pregnancy is like to be ectopic. Ovarian cyst, a solid or fluid-filled sac or pocket within or on the surface of an ovary. Ovarian cyst usually disappears in a few months but can cause complications if they don't. Now there are various types of ovarian cysts just like follicle cysts, corpus luteum cysts, dermoid cysts, cyst adenomas and endometriomas. Most cysts don't cause symptoms and go away on their own. However, a large ovarian cyst can cause pelvic pain, fullness or heaviness in the abdomen, nausea and vomiting, weight gain, unusual bleeding and bloating. The investigations that can be done are transvaginal ultrasound, CT scan, CA125 blood test can help suggest if a cyst is due to ovarian cancer. The risk factors are history of previous ovarian cysts, irregular menstrual cycles, infertility, PCOS, endometriosis, obesity, early menstruation, hyperthyroidism, and tomography for breast cancer. Thank you. Have a nice day.